Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be sharing a fun summer card featuring tailored expression dyes. I'm also going to be sharing with you some Zig Clean Color watercoloring, and I'll also be sharing tips and tricks on how to add details to your die cuts. So let's get started and check it out. The products I'm going to be using today from Tailored Expressions are On The Line Beach Cutting Plate. This has some really great elements to be able to create cute scenes. And I'm also going to be pairing it with the Happy Summer Banners, which I'm going to be stringing between the two palm trees that are on this die. This large palm tree die it cuts out this beautiful little frame that you will be able to start to build your scene with. You can see I've die cut all of the elements from some watercolor paper here. I actually die cut a few of them, like the, uh, the little surfboards and the coconuts a few times, so I ended up with quite a few of those. And I'm doing that on purpose so that way I can have them in multiple colors. To get started, I'm coloring the palm tree leaves with some green Zig Clean Color markers. I'll have all the colors listed on the Simon blog and also in the video description. I colored the palms very simply because they're going to be mostly hidden with the other palm tree leaves that will be on top. But for the trunks of the palm trees, I'm going to be coloring those in a little bit of a stripe pattern to try to emulate the effect of a real palm tree. I'll go ahead and let that dry while I move on to the sand. The sand I'm using, the flesh color, this is a really light peachy brown color. I'm going to color that in and then I'm going to let that dry as well. I'm going to be working in layers. I'm moving on to the next set of palm tree leaves. These are the ones that are going to get layered on top. I colored them with some more of that same green and this time I'm making sure I leave a little bit of a highlight. Just being careful that when I'm coloring to make sure that I leave some lighter areas and then darker along the top portion. You can color these however you like. The water brush that I'm using is a water brush that we carry here at Simon Says Stamp. I'll have that linked in the video description as well and also on the Simon Says Stamp blog. I really love this water brush because it has a really large barrel which holds a lot more water than most other watercolor brushes. So this is a really big bonus for me on this watercolor brush. For the surfboards, I'm adding some details. I wanted to make sure that I added details to all these die cuts because they aren't stamped images. So I need to make sure that when I'm coloring, I don't color them totally flat because they will look flat. So I'm in this case, I'm adding some detail to the surfboard. I'm using some stripes on this one. And on all the surfboards, I added stripes and other types of details just to give them a more realistic look. So I'm going to blend that out with my water brush, just making sure I get the colors blended well. This is Canson XL watercolor paper that I'm using for this watercoloring. You can use any type of watercolor paper you prefer. For this one, I wanted to create a little bit of an X diamond pattern. So here I'm just adding some coloring along in an X and then I'm blending that out with my water brush. Once that dries, I'll go ahead and add in some yellow as well to those white areas. This next surfboard, I'm going to color in some orange stripes. I just used some orange color and I'm going to skip every other stripe so that way I can have a white and orange striped surfboard. I really love how these Zig Clean color markers really make it so easy to create some really great watercoloring effects. Now I'm going to start coloring the banners. I'm going to be alternating the colors on this banner to match the colors that I'm using in the card. So I'm just switching between the colors, making sure that I get them covered nicely. And I'll end up going over top of some of them again just to darken up the colors a little bit because they were very light in the first coat and I wanted them to be a bit more intense. I also did the same thing then for the other banner as well. Now for the coconuts, I'm using a oatmeal color. I think this one was dark oatmeal. And I'm just adding some color onto the center of the little coconuts and then I'm going to blend that out. I did that for all of them. For the crab, I'm using a base coat of yellow. I just added just a little bit because it blends out very well. And then I'll go ahead and add in a little bit of orange just to add a little bit of extra interest to this little crab. I really like how the yellow and the orange blended together so well and you can see in the finished card how nicely that color combination looks on that crab. For the seagulls, I just colored in their little feet and I also added some shading using the light gray marker and I didn't even blend that out because it was so small I wanted to just make that nice and easy. Now for the seashells, I'm coloring those with the flesh color and then for this long seashell, I'm also going to add some stripes using that same oatmeal color and I just blended that out just slightly with my water brush. Next, it's time to add some details to the now dry frame. I'm taking another color of brown and I'm just adding some more texture to the little palm tree trunks. I'll go ahead and blend that out with my water brush, but I'm not blending it out too much because I want to make sure that that texture of the stripes really stands out. You can see as I'm coloring, I'm just doing some very random flicks. And that's just going to give this a little bit more of an organic feel. For the sand, I'm going to add some shading using a lighter brown. And I'll go ahead and blend that out. 
And then I'll also start adding in some more sand texture later on once this dries. Now it's time to start putting our scene together. Here I've got my piece of watercolor paper that I'm going to die cut from a stitched rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp. This will make it perfectly sized to go with our little palm tree frame. I'm going to create a little background. This is going to be very simple. I'm going to take some blue marker and I'm just going to create some really rough sketching of water. And I'm going to blend that out with a larger paintbrush. Now the reason I did the rough sketches was because I wanted this to have texture and look like it was moving water. So having that rough lines across the paper really adds to that effect. We're going to start adding in some darker color now using a aqua color marker. And again, I'll have all the colors listed on the Simon blog and on the video description below. I'm going to do the same effect and start adding in the stripes. I'll go ahead and blend this one out as well. And I did a second layer once that dried and I did the exact same thing going back over top of areas and just adding those rough sketches along the water just to really fill that in and give this water a lot of texture. After the watercoloring was done, I dried it and then I'm taking my Distress Sprayer and flicking on a bunch of different water droplets. I let those dry for probably about 30 seconds or so and then I dabbed them up with a rag and this just lifts off some of the color and I love that Zig Clean Color Markers react so well with water. I'm going to work on the sky now. Here I'm applying a layer of water across this entire panel. This is just going to get the paper wet and it'll help my marker move a lot easier because I really want this to be a very light fade from a yellow to whitish tone. So here I'm just going to apply some of that color down along the bottom, being careful not to blend it too much with the blue on the water. And then I'll go ahead and take my brush once again and blend this out with some water. And this will just really soften this to help me create a really nice gradient of color from the bottom portion of the sky to the top. As I was coloring the sky, I decided I wanted to add more texture to the water. So I'm going to cover up that sky with just a piece of scratch paper. I'm going to apply some of that dark blue marker that I used for the water onto a clear block and flick on the color using a wet paintbrush. This will help give me just a little bit of extra texture to the water and help it have a more realistic appearance. Now it's time to start putting our scene together. So I'm taking some foam tape and I'm applying it all over the back side of this little frame. I'm going to touch it down right onto the bottom portion of our card and I'm making sure that I line it up on both sides so that way I have it perfectly centered right in the center area of this panel. And now I'll start putting the rest of the elements onto the scene. I want the banners to be stretching across the palm trees, so I'm going to lay these down where I want them, and to hold them in place, I'm going to take some, just some regular scotch tape, and tape them down onto the palm trees. This will help them hold in place as I'm building the rest of the scene and adding the layers, because these banners are actually going to be hidden under the top layer of the palm trees. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide that adhesive with these little palm trees and this will make it perfectly easy for us to be able to layer these up and it really creates a really cute card. I wanted this to have some layered look so I'm going to offset this a little bit. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way but I thought it looked really cute to have the double layer of palm trees. So I'm just going to go ahead and like I said offset that from the original layer but you could adhere them right on top and just have them as three little palm tree leaves instead of six. So after I've applied those down, I'm now going to start adding in the rest of the elements. I'm taking the surfboards and I'm going to pop those up with some foam tape. You can see I'll just tuck these underneath the ground. I used foam tape to attach all of those down. Next, I'm going to take the little crab and I'm going to layer him up with a piece of foam tape onto the scene. And I used a lot of foam tape on this because I wanted this to have a lot of realistic dimension. This is really great for adding a realistic touch to your scenes. The birds I popped up with foam tape, the one I tucked underneath the sand, the other one I tucked up on top. And I really love how this die set comes with so many different elements that you can pair up together to create some really cute scenes. There's also some little swimsuits that you can add onto a clothesline. That is really, really cute. I didn't use them on here because I wanted to have the banner instead, but you could also change it up and have the little swimsuits hanging from the palm trees instead of the banner. The coconuts I'm applying down with some liquid glue. I didn't want to use foam tape for these. And then I'm also going to add that texture that I mentioned earlier using my Zig Clean Color Markers onto this now dry watercolor paper. I'm being very sporadic with how the placement of the color. I'm making sure I just add some scribbles because I don't want this to be defined and I don't want it to be a perfect line because I want it to have a look of texture. So I'm just going to blend things out as needed and then I'll also start adding in some darker color using some more darker markers. I also ended up coloring some of the little light strings that are included in the on the line beach die set. 
I'm going to string those underneath the palm trees. This is an afterthought. I kind of didn't think of adding these until afterwards. And I was like, oh no, I wanted to add those in. So I'm going to go ahead and lay those in underneath. I'm being very careful. And what really saved me on this was because I had layered everything up with foam tape. And I was able to tuck these in underneath. Otherwise, I would not have been able to add them on if I had glued everything down with liquid glue or other type of adhesive that applied it directly to the card base. So I'll just go ahead and string three strands of these little lights across my card. I really love how you can layer these up to create these really fun, tropical looking lights. I love this scene. It makes me feel like I should be in Hawaii or something. I mean, like I could totally see myself right there on that beach with a nice cold drink, looking at the sunset, and just enjoying the nice warm tropical air. I mean, that's, that just sounds like so much fun, doesn't it? All right, and now to finish up my card, I'm going to just add a little bit of hemp to the top portion. I tied it into a bow. I'm gonna just put some liquid adhesive on along the backside of the little knot on the bow, and that's gonna help hold this in place so it doesn't shift around and move. I really love doing this on my cards because it makes sure that my bows stay in place and don't fall apart later on. I also trimmed off the ends using my Tim Holtz scissors. And that's gonna do it for me. I hope you've enjoyed and got some inspiration on using tailored expression dies and your watercolors to create some really fun details on your die cuts. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and head on over to the Simon Says Stamp blog where you can get more information on this card including still pictures and products used. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can connect with us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, as well as our blog. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.